Talk about, you know, your advice for a band. Imagine that we had a band here today and they say, hey, we're putting together a band, Mario. What should we do in terms of a band agreement? Um, a band agreement, unfortunately, is something like a prenuptial agreement. Because the most important part of a band agreement is what happens if things aren't working out with a particular player. Um, and one of the most uh, argumentative things can be publishing. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the way it, I, I've been involved with bands, for example, I worked a lot for years and years ago with a guy named Alan Nevin who uh, managed Guns N' Roses White, and Great White and so forth. His, his attitude is everybody was an equal writer. Because if you don't do that, everybody's going to be at each other's throats fighting over, you know, what the publishing income is going to be. And what people don't realize, I remember uh, Tom Petty was in an interview once. He said, publishing, publishing, he thought when he came to L.A. was just sheet music. Well, it, it's not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the vast amount of money comes from the royalties paid for every copy of your song that's sold on a record. And uh, I can name you numerous bands where the, the people that kept their publishing uh, are extremely wealthy compared to the non-writing members of those bands. Yeah. Uh, it is night and day. Yeah. So, uh, yes, it's right. It's in the beginning. Uh, everybody wants to be equal and so forth. But when one person or two people are the ones writing all the music, it's not going to take long. Of course, I've seen it backfire. Um, I think I can tell this story because it was yeah, so years ago. We can tell it. If not, we'll, not, we'll edit it later. But years and years ago, there was a band called Climax Blues Band. They were out of England. And they had a record deal, and they all were going to be equal. And they did two albums where everything was equal. you know. And the, the, I think it was two guys in the band got to the point of saying, we're writing everything. These guys aren't writing anything, and they're going for, a, for an absolute free ride on this. So third album, they decide we're no longer equal. You know, you got to go out. And you, if you got to kill it to eat it, you know, yeah. you have to yeah. go out and, and do it. Well, what happens? The keyboard player writes a song called I Love You, mm. number one record around the world. He wasn't one of the guys <laughs> that ever wrote a song prior to that. But now he wanted to write. Well, now he wanted to write, and he's got a number one single, their biggest single they ever had, and everybody else in the band was going, you know, if we had done it before, everybody would have shared equally. Yeah. So, um, so, so in a band member agreement, one of the things you focus on is how is the publishing going to be split up? How are people that don't actually write? And you can do it all in all kinds of various ways. You could give uh, a little. You don't have to say that the uh, you know the per person who doesn't write anything gets zero, mm -hmm. which is kind of the normal yeah. extreme. You can always give them a taste smaller of share. something, but yeah. a smaller share. Yeah. Um, My experience is too, you know, while while there's something to be acknowledged about, you know, that some guys may be writing more than others, right? There's a lot to be said from my experience, and I've worked with bands primarily, that keeping everybody feeling like they got skin in the game is important. So a little writer. piece of something for everybody speaks to the fact that somebody might have written a great hook and a great lyric and all of that, which is what people are humming, but. There is something to be said, real, about the, 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 the chemistry amongst band members and what that adds to the whole equation. Let's talk about, when, when you talk about this being a prenuptial agreement, let's talk about the name of a band. Who owns the name? That's another important one. You mentioned Guns N' Roses, and, and, and Axl Rose has made it clear to everybody in his mind that he is Guns N' Roses. And, owns the and, name. And, and he owns the name. Um, how that, does that, 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 that is probably the toughest... And most important issue is the name. Mm -hmm. Way, way important. Uh, uh, you know, uh, just to ask uh, uh, this is John Densmore going yeah. after who was the drummer in the Doors, mm -hmm. going after the other members of the Doors over the ownership of his name. I mention it because it was a very highly publicized yeah. case. Mm -hmm. But a lot of band members really don't even, a lot of bands don't even think about who owns the name, but the name is incredibly important. Particularly if you've had some hits and, 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 and a core of the group wanted to go out and bring in a new singer, for example, and go out and tour. Journey's doing that. I don't know how they worked that out with Steve, uh, 
Steve Perry, but it's a big issue. Let's talk about something else that happens at the end of a band agreement. Um, when a band member leaves the band, talk about the whole idea of continuing income and, and where that starts and where that ends, typically with a, a leaving band member is what they're referred to. Okay, and that kind of segue a little bit off the name because um, dealing with the name, name uh, becomes legally valid when it becomes uh, recognized to the public. So if these four individuals present themselves as this particular band, that then all four of them share in creating what we call the goodwill mm -hmm. from that name. So now what happens more often than not, or is, is, is that you want to kick somebody out, mm -hmm. not that they want to leave, although that's also the case. Sure. The lead singer all of a sudden decides, oh, I, yeah. I want to have my solo career, I don't need you guys <clears throat> anymore. But a lot of times it's somebody who's not showing up and so forth, they want to kick them out. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, trust me, I've been through some hairy fights with that, uh, namely the Eagles. <coughs> yeah. Where, um, I don't yeah. need to go into, in, yeah. into that, but that was a huge amount of litigation uh, over, over where they could tour with the name the Eagles. Uh, so you want to address what happens with that person. Mm -hmm. And also, there's a flip side of it. If somebody leaves a band, <coughs> can that person go out and use that name to promote himself? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people would at least want to say, formerly a member yeah. of fill in the blank, Creedence yeah. Clearwater. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. or they create a creek, you know, Creedence Clearwater Revisited yeah. or, or something sure. like that. Sure. Uh, and I've seen those clauses meticulously negotiated mm -hmm. as to when and where and what size of type you can say formerly a member of yeah. uh, in your bio, but also more importantly, if you're playing a little club down, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, can you say formerly a member yeah. of Journey? I think um, so I'm, I didn't answer your question. No, what, the, the money. Yeah. <laughs> Usually you wanna continue to give the leaving member, whether he leaves voluntarily or whatever, his share of what was recorded and wrote while he was a member. Mm -hmm. Now you could put a caveat on that and say, and released. Yeah. So if something is in the, uh, you know, is on the shelf, it's never seen the light of day, they wouldn't participate. And typically I would advise a band that the band should take a piece off the top mm. for its administration. Mm. Because this leaving member could just be sitting at home, he doesn't have to go out and tour, he doesn't have to work, and how much catalog it's sold by the band continuing the tour. If everybody in the band decided to do what the leaving member did and just quit, that catalog shrivels yeah. up and dies. Yeah. Yeah. But if the band continues to go out and record new records and so forth, then, uh, uh, yeah. um, you know, th 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 that's money that being generated. And <clears throat> usually what happens, they continue to get a share of that. Yeah. Uh, typically not on merchandising. Yeah. So if somebody was a member of the, the original band ABC, um, you could, they would go on and continue to see t-shirts that say ABC, but they... Up until they leave the band. Right, but they wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't, the band would not have to give the leaving member a piece of the merchandising. Yeah. Yeah. Not always, but I yeah. mean, that's, that's far Well, I think case. for all our folks out there, you know, if you're in a band and, you know, the truth is if you're calculating the odds, most artists, for not for lack of talent, but for commercial success, or, or don't succeed. But I think it's definitely worth taking the time to uh, prepare for a win, uh, because if you haven't prepared for a win, and you actually have one, and then you see your whole thing come unraveling after the fact because you didn't take care of business, it is a sad story, one that's been played out way, way, way too many times.